My solution to flattening this butcher block was to build a router flattening sled or sometimes it's called a slab flattening mill. Basically the router slides back and forth inside the sled which rides along two rails, giving me movement on the X and Y axes and I'm using the plunge router to give me the Z axis. And using a one and a quarter inch surfacing bit in the router, I can complete this operation in about 15 minutes. So this build starts at the table saw where I cut the parts for the rails of the mill first. The rails consist of a base and an inner and outer rail part. I can get all the parts for both rails out of a quarter sheet of three quarter inch plywood. I'm also using about a one foot scrap of plywood to cut the four rail guides that will attach to the bottom of the sled later. To assemble a rail, I carefully clamp the inner and outer halves of the rails together, making sure to line them up on the bottom edge. The inner half of the rail is shorter and will provide a place for the rail guides to ride on. I decided not to use glue to fasten these together. I was really concerned that the moisture in the glue would cause warping in such thin strips of plywood and it's important for these rails to remain as straight as possible. So instead I just pre-drilled and countersunk holes along the rail and fastened the two halves together with screws. I then repeated the same thing with the other rail, aligning the two halves, clamping, countersinking, and screwing it together. The next step is to cut a shallow dado in the base of each rail, maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so. The purpose here is to provide a way to keep the rails straight over time. You can use a dado stack for this, but I just use my ripping blade which has a flat grind tooth on it to make a smooth bottom in my dados. I just snuck up on the fit until the rails fit inside, which I apparently forgot to film. I then fasten the base to the rails by pre-drilling, countersinking, and fastening with screws. Next I set up to cut the bottom of the sled. To get the width for the bottom, I actually use my router as the guide. I push the fence up against it until it touches the blade, and then I back it off by about a 32nd of an inch to provide a little bit of room to prevent binding. Now to create the slot in the bottom of the sled, I first bore two one and a half inch holes where I want the slot to begin and end. To finish the slot, I set up feather boards near the blade to create both downward and lateral pressure against the workpiece. I then slide the workpiece over the blade and slowly raise it, pulling the workpiece back and forth across the blade until I cut through to the front and back holes. I then lower the blade back down and flip the workpiece over and repeat the process on the other side, making sure to secure the inner waist piece as I complete the cut to prevent it from catching on the blade and causing kickback. So now with the bottom of the sled complete, I can cut the sides of the sled to length using my miter saw. Using clamps, I secure the sides to the bottom with screws, making sure to pre-drill and countersink my holes first. I repeat that process with the two ends. No glue here, just screws, making sure to fasten the ends to the bottom as well as to the sides. And the last step is to fasten the guide rails to the bottom of the sled. To start, I use cyanoacrylate or CA glue to bond the first guide to the bottom edge of the sled. I then use a scrap piece of 3 quarter inch ply as a spacer and repeat the process with the inner guide placing it snugly against the spacer. I go ahead and move the spacer flush with the top of the guides and then fasten the guides to the sled with screws. Now I had to use a regular drill bit here for the extra depth because my runners were a little too long for my countersink bit. I went ahead and knocked off the inside corners of the guides with the block plane here just to help create less binding and a smoother ride on the rails. Okay, now to set up my mill, I use the sled as a spacer and I fasten one end of the rails to my table saw using clamps. I then slide the sled to the other end of the mill which ensures my two rails are parallel to one another and I fasten this end to my outfeed table using screws. Your setup may allow you to use clamps on this end too, but mine doesn't, so screws it is. Next, I liberally lube the bottom of the sled with paste wax. This will allow the router to slide smoothly and not bind, which could be really dangerous while operating the router. I also lube both the inside and the outside of the rails with the wax so the guides run smoothly. Now everything slides nice and easy. Oh, uh, hi, it's future me. Sorry for the interruption, but I needed to warn you that using paste wax was not a good idea on those rails. 
You see all that gunked up sawdust on the rails? Yeah, that can cause the sled to bind, which is exactly what you are trying to prevent. A much better solution is to use dry lube. It won't attract the sawdust and cause the rails to get all gunky like that. Just spray it on, allow a couple minutes for it to dry, and things are nice and slidey slidey again. Okay, that's all I got. Now get back to work. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using a one and a quarter inch bit to surface with, and I'm also installing a collet extension to allow the bit to lower enough to reach the workpiece. I begin the flattening process by setting my workpiece on the table saw under the sled. I then put my router in the sled and begin to look for the lowest spot on the workpiece. For me, that's this corner. Then I go ahead and set my router bit to that depth. I'm holding my workpiece laterally using these 150 pound mag switches. I don't really need to hold it down because the workpiece itself weighs about 40 pounds, so it's not going anywhere. I am, however, shimming the workpiece on one corner to remove any rocking before I begin cutting. This is a pretty simple process, really. I start at the lowest spot on the workpiece and begin passing the router back and forth, moving it about three quarters of an inch at a time between cuts. You want to take slow, steady passes across the workpiece to avoid the router tipping up, causing the bit to gouge your work. As I make progress across the workpiece, I remove more and more material with each pass as I approach the higher spots and the sawdust begins to pile up. Once I completed the first side, I flipped my work over and repeated the sequence on the other side. Once I'm done, I remove the router and the sled and begin to sweep the sawdust to examine my work. I then use my vacuum to clean up this huge mess. And finally, I use my random orbit sander at 60 grit or so to remove the machine marks and then I progress up to 220 grit until it looks like this. Smooth and flat. 